What? Get out of there! Hey, in the car! Yeah, you shot! Get in the car! Oh! Before we go to more of that video and explain what set it off, why the cop springs into action and begins unloading his weapon on his own car, we want to tell you a little bit about the details, including the amazing fact that the man that was in that car was not killed, was not injured. That is the good news from this story. In fact, nobody was killed, nobody was injured. And you might wonder, well, how that is. The guy in the video, the cop, yells, I've been hit. The thing is, he hadn't actually been hit, and we're going to go into all the details of that. First, we want to show you some of those involved in the story. You can see in the photos right here. This story traces back to November of last year in Okaloosa County, Florida. And the officer that you saw in the video, Jesse Hernandez, and his partner, Beth Roberts, had a man named Marky Jackson handcuffed in the back of the squad car that was visible in that video. An acorn apparently fell from a tree hit the car, it was so such a small thing that honestly, the first few times that I listened to the video, I didn't even hear it. That is what Hernandez apparently thought was the report of a weapon. He thought that Jackson inside of the car had begun firing at him. And not only did he think that a gun had been fired, he thought that he had been hit by a bullet after the acorn hit the car. So you see him diving away, turning, and unloading his service weapon on the car. Now, that's his involvement. Well, his partner gets involved, as you'll see in this video. Do you know your tag number off the top of your head? Okay, okay. it's okay. What? What? Wait, right there? So that is, of course, the body cam footage from Beth Roberts, who hears the gunfire from her partner at the car and believes this thing is going down and begins also unloading her weapon on the car, which again has a single man who has already been detained by the police, is unarmed and restrained in that vehicle. And again, thankfully, he was not actually hit. Now, there are consequences, thankfully, for some of the police involved in this, and we will get to those. But first, I do want to talk about the actual victim here. So, Marky Jackson posted about this experience. We want to read some excerpts from that for you. He says, I was searched multiple times, then unlawfully handcuffed and placed into the back seat of the cop car while being strapped down by the seatbelts. A few moments later, I hear an officer scream, I'm hit, he's armed. As soon as that was announced, multiple shots were fired at me while I was stuck in the back seat. All I could do was lean over and play dead to prevent getting shot in the head. Goes on to say, I was blessed not to get hit by any bullets or get hit physically, but mentally, I'm not okay. I haven't been the same since, and I don't think this feeling I have will ever change. I truly believe I'm damaged for life. I eventually found a way to rest my cuffed hands on the shattered window area to show that I wasn't armed. A few minutes later, they swarmed the car and slammed me on the ground to search me and look for any injuries. No gun was recovered from Marky Jackson because Jackson did not have a gun. Jackson had, as we said, already been searched and was restrained in the vehicle before being shot at. Now, as we said, there were consequences. Uh, investigators concluded that Hernandez's use of force was not justified in this case because the only external stimulus he had was the sound of an acorn, which is just one of those sentences that it's gonna stick with me for a while, I don't know about you. However, his partner was exonerated. So uh, Beth uh, Roberts in that case was exonerated for her actions. In a statement on Hernandez's resignation, because Hernandez uh, did resign, Sheriff Aiden defended Hernandez as genuinely fearing for his life again over the sound of an acorn. They were cleared of criminal wrongdoing. Sergeant Roberts apparently is still with the force. And I think that we can differentiate their responses. It still seems a little bit irresponsible to see your partner shooting at a vehicle and just begin unloading on it. But that said, she didn't know that the acorn was the only thing that led to it. She is she trusts her partner, she believes her partner when he says that the sound of an acorn falling from a tree was him literally being shot by someone they had already searched. And so I have less of a problem with what she did, but Sharon, I do want your thoughts on this. This is uh, stunning and, and thank goodness. 
that this man who was cuffed and in the police car in a seatbelt, which are incredible details that have to be stated again and again, is alive. Thank goodness he's alive. Because I saw various things as this thing will be investigated. Number one would be incompetence. I, this chief has got to go too, by the way, if that's the statement you're going to give that genuinely feared for their life. Well, then he shouldn't be a police officer if we're going to start now fearing acorns, okay? They should not be any kind of officer encountering the public. A failure to follow perhaps training protocols. And I too have a problem with her just shooting blindly based. I'd like to know what made her trust this partner so much, but sure. They're different and should face different consequences, lack of common sense. Have we mentioned how nutty this is? And I didn't even mean for that to, to, I didn't mean for it to come out that way, but this is not. And the final thing I would say, thank goodness, a bad shot, Mm -hmm. a bad shot, not even a moving target. And if you really had a threat to society, you're also a bad shot. This is an incredible comedy of errors that accidentally threaded a needle and worked out to the benefit of human life. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what else to say about it. Yeah, I, of all of the sort of cartoon elements of this, the fact That's that right. thankfully they're both basically stormtroopers when it comes to shooting at someone who literally could not move, was just restrained in the vehicle. That is the good news here. Um, the fact that there could be people beyond the car that could be hit by by this fire. It's just there's a lot of dark aspects of this, and I and I just think about the experience that Marky Jackson had, hearing, I'm um, hit. He's armed, and you're thinking, oh my God, I'm about to be executed. This is madness. And you hear the shots ring out, and thankfully you survive it. But I totally buy that that would traumatize you for the rest of your life. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.